the motor. The Ryobi outboard motor is powered by an old Ryobi drill. This thing is straight out of the 90s. I had an extra one laying around. I didn't want to use my new Ryobi drill. So I basically chopped off the handle with the trigger. I have a purpose for that later on in this video. So this is the motor that will power the outboard. This piece over here, I chopped off of my Ryobi reciprocating saw. Uh, I was having problems with it, so I volunteered it for the cause. On the inside, I grind it out all of the ribs. This will come into play later as I assemble this whole motor together. On the back side, I brought my wiring through the top here. This piece here, I'm not even sure where I got this from, but it fit in the hole, so I used it. This piece right here is just some of the extra plastic that I cut and then screwed onto here to cover the hole. Because there's also a handle here, which we use later on in this project as well. So I'll move those to the side. This is the reciprocating saw boot off the front of the saw. This is what you hold on to as the saw's cutting. So this also gets used as part of the cover of this whole mechanism. Um, and then over here, let me move this stuff aside. These are additional components that I use to basically stabilize the motor to keep it from, from twisting. And then this I use as a handle, as a, as a emergency handle, should my steering mechanism that I've created for this outboard motor fail, then I have a way of turning the motor, the outboard motor, with a handle. So that's what this is. So let's get to assembling. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this drill to, instead of hammer drill or screw, I'm going to go straight into drill mode so it doesn't bind up on me and start torquing out. And then I'm going to make sure that my torque setting is at the max. Also, I'm going to set the speed to 2 because if I set it to 1, it's going to be really slow. Also, this drill has a reverse gear in it or, or a switch. I'm not sure if it's a gear or a switch that puts it in the reverse. But I'm going to use that on my trigger that will run this motor. Next step, I'm going to mount the motor into the boot. So I basically align these switches with these holes that are already in the boot. I've already drilled a hole, and that hole is going to allow me to put a screw through here and that is going to be attached to a bar that basically keeps this motor from torquing one way or the other uh, when it's running. So now I'll take my reciprocating saw cover piece and I'm going to mount that in here. It's a little tricky. But once you get it on, it basically looks like this. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple tie wraps. If you have one big long tie wrap, that'll work. But as you see, my tie wraps are a little short. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a couple tie wraps together. And basically, 
cinch this rubber boot to the chartreuse reciprocating sock cover. And there we go. So that's all fastened now. I'll just go ahead and trim these and we'll go to the next step. Another modification that I had to make other than punching a hole through here to mount my anti-torsion bar is a slot for the bar to go through so it doesn't interfere with this rubber piece. Otherwise, if I don't cut that slot in there, the bar will push on the rubber and it'll push it into this this collet here and it'll start to overheat. So this bar basically goes right through there and continues on to where it needs to fasten to. In the next step, I'm going to install the anti-torque bar. So basically this piece here keeps the motor from twisting one way or another. Um, while it's running or if I'm going into forward or reverse as well I'll keep it from from twisting on me um, this piece right here this little bar came off of another Ryobi product I'm not even sure um, what the product was um, because I do have a lot of old Ryobi products laying around that don't work anymore that are from the 90s so um, this piece right here is just a piece of tubing and its purpose is basically to hold the handle, which is also a Ryobi handle, but to hold that handle in place when not in use. And I'll show you how that attaches to the motor um, in a little bit here. So let's go ahead and install this. Next step is to fasten the assembly all together using this threaded knob. This will hold the anti-torque bar that attaches to the rest of the motor and basically keeps it from torquing left or right. Now, the threads that are showing, those are used for this handle. This handle actually threads right on. And now, if the steering system fails, you can grab this handle and you can turn the outboard motor using this handle right here. So when not in use, this comes off and it stores right in there. Now to cover these threads, I found this on a lamp and it has threads on the inside and it fits. So I just screw that on there like that, and now that covers the threads. So when it's all said and done, here's the motor assembly. And this is the collet that I'm going to attach to the rest of the drivetrain for the outboard motor. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the trigger mechanism. This is actually a joystick that was made out of the Ryobi reciprocating saw. However, the Ryobi reciprocating saw doesn't have a forward and reverse switch. So I actually had to take the forward and reverse mechanism out of the drill and install it in here. It took a little bit of carving of interior ribs of this handle to get all of that to fit and work right. This trigger is actually the trigger off the drill as well because it works with the engineering of the switch itself here. So this would be forward, reverse, acceleration. I cut plastic pieces 
and glued them on and then shaped them to fit perfectly and then that is attached to a post which attaches to a pivot this is all PVC pipe by the way and this pivot basically allows me to steer the outboard motor through some cables that are attached from here to the back of the motor this attaches to the raft and this is the wiring that's going to the joystick so just to give you a closer view of how this all goes together this little piece right here is actually part of the Ryobi reciprocating saw boot I, I uh, removed it and it fit in here so and then this is PVC pipe that is glued to this handle piece so this is PVC just painted black it goes to a T it's a three-quarter inch T elbow and this is just a plug and then here I have two eye screws or eye bolts that connect to my steering cables left and right and then back here on this T I have a threaded piece of PVC that basically allows me to pivot the uh, the trigger to turn left or right and then that goes to another T that's been split in half and the other half basically gets clamped around the raft tubing steel tubing and then this is just the wiring and I'll show you where all this wiring goes in a second so here is the other half of the drill I painted it brown just so it kind of camouflages into the raft but this is basically where the uh, the battery installs and this I just tie wrap like this onto the tubing of the raft so I just pop this out when I need another battery pop another one in and I'm good to go and what I've done is I've wired all of that into a voltmeter so that I know how much power my battery has. I press this little button, it tells me I have 18.2 volts. So I know if I'm charged, not charged, how much power I have left. This little switch right here is just an uh, auxiliary switch should I need it. That's provided by these two smaller wires here. And then over here, we have the two, mo the two wires that will connect to the motor. So let's go ahead, connect all of this to the motor, and see what happens. Okay, so we've got the battery connected to the switch, to the motor, right through all these wires. So now, if I press on the trigger, the motor will turn. If I reverse the direction, the motor will turn in the opposite direction. Okay, so let's go over the drive line for the outboard motor. So this is a Ryobi weed eater head. This attaches to a spool for weed eating. This goes up to a motor that powers the weed eater. So what I did is I took two weed eaters and I connected them at both ends. So I got one weed eater head down here and one weed eater head down here. And this is actually the yellow tubing that connects the weed eater head to the weed eater engine on the other end. So I ended up using that. So let me go over what all of this stuff is. Okay, so on this end we have the prop. So this prop 
is actually a brush cutter head made by Ryobi. Um, it's, uh, a, it doesn't look like this. I actually shaped this, bent it, and bolted it to the head. Since it all fit, it was perfect. This is a steering mechanism. These are just PVC fittings that I split down the middle and then clamp together to hold in place. So if you take a look there, you can see where it's split down the center of this T and then clamped together around this, uh, this black metal tubing right here. This piece right here I'll get into in a second. This is a four-way connector or fitting, uh, PVC fitting. These, fit, these are all white PVC fittings that I painted black. Okay, And what this fitting does is it gives me a universal joint. So I can turn my motor and I can also pivot my motor um, using these four-way fittings. This is basically a piece, it's an electrical fitting that keeps this whole, my motor that's going to be attached here, it keeps this whole piece from sliding down. So it's just basically keeping this from sliding up this way. I don't have any sliding down this way, but this could also drop down that way. So what this is, is basically wire cover that I fashioned to fit and it basically keeps this from sliding down. So here's a closer look at the steering mechanism. So basically this is just bar stock and there's a spring that I attached here that gives me tension so if I overturn it'll pull the spring instead of uh, bending and breaking things and this will connect to the cable up to the front of my raft to the trigger uh, handle the pivoting trigger handle up in the front that provides my steering so there's one cable here one cable goes here so when in the front, when I'm turning left or right, it's pulling one cable or the other. And that provides the steering for the outboard motor. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the motor to the drive line. So what I'm going to do is basically put the shaft, the drive shaft, right into the drill collet align my anti-torsion bar to the hole that's in the weed eater head and fasten that down. And then we're just going to fasten the drill collet to the spindle. So it's nice and tight. There we go. So now what we have is the world's first Ryobi powered outboard motor. Okay, so let's see how she runs. So I've got the trigger in hand and we'll go ahead and give it a little bit of juice. Now we'll go 100%. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the forward and reverse switch. So black is forward, white is reverse. Yes, it has a lock and an unlock icon on there. This switch came out of a reciprocating saw. The actual reciprocating saw that this handle came off of and it fit in the hole so 
I had to do some modifications to make this switch work with the trigger that came off the drill that has the reverse, the forward and the reverse. Okay, so in forward, you're going to see the blade spin clockwise. Okay, in reverse, you're going to see it spin counterclockwise. So it does work in both directions. So I brought my inflatable pontoon raft into the garage. I left the inflatable pontoons. One goes here, one goes here. I left them off because they're about eight feet long and they're a little, little hard to work around. So this is the pontoon raft. It's got a few mods done to it. I've got fishing pole holders right here. That right there is a transducer for uh, the fish finder. This is a net holder, holds the net. But when you catch a fish, you can land it in the net. And back here, is where we're going to mount the Ryobi outboard motor. So let's get started. So what I've done to prep this back tube is I've already installed my clamps loosely and then what I'm going to do is now take my motor and set it and center it on the back of this raft here on the tubing okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the other half of the fitting put that underneath take the clamp and then just clamp that down so again what I did what this is this piece right here is just a piece of PVC tubing uh, fitting I mean and what I did is I cut it in half, the bottom, so that it would fit over the tubing of the raft. And then I'm just basically clamping that piece back on and that'll keep the motor from turning. This universal joint is also made out of a PVC fitting. It's a four-way fitting and I have this tube going through this way and I have another, I actually have two ends going in this way. So I can pivot and I can also turn. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these. Make sure they're aligned. and do the other side. So now the motor is actually mounted to the frame. So what I have now is a mounted Ryobi outboard motor and I was mentioning this four-way joint that I have here and what that does is it gives me this range of motion here for adjusting uh, how deep I need the uh, propeller to go down under water and it also gives me my turning motion so what I'm going to do is just drop this pin right into that hole there and that's just going to keep keep this from moving around while I work on the steering linkage so now I'm going to move on to the steering linkage so the first thing I'm going to do um, due to the fact that 
my steering column has a lot of wiring associated with it. It's also connected to the battery. It's connected to my voltage meter. So I've laid out where everything's going to go. So my voltmeter is going to mount right here. My battery is going to mount right here. And my steering column is going to mount right here between uh, my legs here as I sit and then I basically use the joystick to turn left or right and that'll move the motor in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and start connecting some of this stuff. Okay, so we've got the battery installed, pretty solid. And I've got these two tie wraps that are exposed and showing. So what I did is I took a piece of, um, I took a fitting, a piece of ABS and put two end caps on it and then cut it in half, drill the hole in it, drill the hole right here. And that will serve as a cover to basically cover the tie wraps they're showing. It also puts a little bit of pressure right here on the corner of the battery pack so it straightens it out and keeps it nice and solid. So it serves a couple purposes there and kind of looks like a battery. Now I'm going to mount the uh, voltage indicator. Um, this is something I built and wired. It actually has a backup battery um, in case I hook anything up that's solar powered. has a small battery that will charge up um, so it will regulate that solar voltage. That's if I, I choose to use that and that's connected to this switch here. Otherwise, this is just a voltage meter tells me how much voltage is left in the battery. So I'm going to go ahead and mount that. I drilled two holes here, two holes here into the seat, hole here, hole here, and I should be able to mount it with these tie wraps.
and there we go press that button for voltage and this is just an on off switch if you have a solar panel that's connected to a small pump for any reason or anything that you have electronic that you want an on and off switch it's there So you might be wondering what this is. This is not a drink holder, this is not a rod holder for fishing poles. What this is, it's a battery holder for extra Ryobi batteries to run the outboard motor. They're not connected to the motor, so if your battery on the other side, your main battery dies or gets low, you could take this battery and then swap it out and put the other one in here. So that's what this is. Okay, so next we're gonna mount the joystick with the throttle control and the steering. So that is gonna to mount to this tube down here. Same way the motor's mounted with the clamps. And if you look at the piece that's gonna join this piece right here, it's the same deal. It's a, it's a PVC T or a PVC T fitting that's been cut in half and connected here to the joystick. So we're going to go ahead and uh, mount that off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're getting closer now. So basically you sit here, your le one leg goes here, one leg goes here, you hold the joystick, you squeeze the trigger to go forward or reverse depending on which way the switch is set and you push the joystick this way to go left this way to go right so what's left is connecting the linkage so I'm gonna go ahead and start on that okay now we're gonna connect the joystick to the motor using some cables so I've already pre-cut these cables and added the appropriate hardware that's needed to connect it. And also, I've added these little curved pieces of PVC tubing for the cables to run through. So this basically points to here, and then there's one on the other side that'll run. And it basically runs through that tube all the way back to the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and run those cables through and I'll be back. So once we connect the cable to the front, we need to connect it to the motor. So that's done through a turnbuckle. So the turnbuckle allows me to adjust the centering of the joystick up in the front as compared to where the position of the propeller is in the back. And also, I haven't adjusted anything yet, so it's a little loose, but I did add a spring here so that if the joystick is pulled one way or the other a little too far that you're not going to put any stress on any of these plastic pieces that are here or any of this so the springs help release that so I'm going to go ahead and tighten those turnbuckles okay so the steering cables are connected nice and tight on both sides and if you look at the joystick up in the front as I turn the motor the joystick moves as well so as you can see here as I push the joystick one way or the other my motor turns one way or the other 
So now coming back to the handle. So this steering mechanism for any reason failed. All you have to do is remove this decorative bullet looking thing and replace it with the handle. Just like that. So now I can use the handle to turn if I needed to. Okay, so we've got the motor connected to the joystick up in the front. I'm not done routing the wire, but basically I'm going to run this wire cover over the wiring up to the joystick. And then over here, like I, like I showed you before, we have the battery. So you just pop it in there. If you run out of juice, you've got two batteries here. You just basically take this battery out, swap it out for the one over here. You've got your voltage meter here. So we've got 20 volts on that battery. We've got our joystick that also provides our steering. Excuse the mess in this room. This is uh, part of the garage and it's kind of like a man cave. So there's a lot of junk in here. But anyways, so here's our trigger. That starts up our motor. And then there's a turn. And that's it. Ryobi Outboard Motor Build. Looking around for a great lake to launch from. Uh, found this lake here in Idaho, Lake Vernon. Gorgeous, gorgeous lake. I think this will be the spot. There's actually a boat ramp right across the lake. Quick drive across and we can launch from there. wheels do float. I just unstrapped them. This is all that holds the wheels on. But since they're pneumatic tires and PVC pipe filled with foam, it floats. The only reason I'm taking it off is because it's going to create drag as I'm trying to conserve battery life. I don't need any additional drag on this Okay, we're in the water, ready to launch. I actually have to put it in reverse because I need to turn around. So, throw the reverse switch on and... Whoops, I'm hitting the bottom. Let me move out a little further. There we go. Hitting bottom. Alright, here we go. And we are going in reverse. So now, 
I'll turn it around. I'll go switch into forward. And we'll have to turn this way. There we go. Oops, overturn. There we go.